Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Years ago, a lady wrote a book, and I don't think I've done a review on it yet. I'm not sure I could find the book in my chaos that we call a library, which I don't want to be chaos because God's not the author of confusion. But in that, she quoted from this book, this book, The Devil's Notebook by Anton Sandor LaVey. I'm not doing a review on this book. I do want to show a couple things out of this book. And I have not read this book cover to cover. It took me years to decide to even purchase this book because, you know, I know it's got demonic spirits, demonic spells, whatever on there and all this. But the information is so valuable. And I remember years ago studying theology and the scholastics. And one thing Thomas Aquinas tried to do was he always wanted to know his opponent's argument better than his opponent. So that's the reason I spent so many years studying the Trinity and try to know the Trinity. You know, it's humorous to me when I hear people say, well, you really don't know what the Trinity is. Well, there's, I'm still learning about it, you know, on a regular basis. But for the most part, people I talk to about the Trinity, even theologians, don't really know about the Trinity. There's a lot of holes in their thinking processes about the Trinity. So this, you know, I'm a holiness Pentecostal. Thank God for all the holiness people out there. He goes into television. And so this is in Evangelists versus the New Gods. This is starting on page 84. I'll just show you in here so you can know that I'm not making things up and this type thing. Fascinating stuff in here, I'll just tell you. Uh, in a lot of ways, he, he had a lot of honesty. <laughs> And uh, which sounds strange coming from a Satanist because Satanists, you know, they're the father of lies. Satan is the father of lies. Um, you know, at last, the collected wisdom, humor, and dark observations by the founder of the Church of Satan. He also, he makes a comment in here about the how churches are changing from the satanic bible and i have just man maybe years ago in the late 80s early 90s i might have bought a copy of the satanic bible we used to sell them sometimes at the christian bookstore but it was only by special order because we didn't want to keep those things in the shelf okay so let's get into this without talking anymore um Okay, so people are wising up about the Swigerts and the Roberts and Bakers only because it's time for them to be allowed to wise up. Why? Because the Christ sellers are beginning to compete with the very God they were employing, TV. So notice it calls TV a God. So, in previous centuries, the church was the great controller, dictating morality, the stifling free expression, and posing as conservator of all great art and music. Today, we have television dictating fashions, thoughts, attitudes, objectives, as once did the church, using many of the same techniques, but doing it so palatably that no one notices. Instead of sins to keep people in line, we have fear of being judged unacceptable by our peers. You know, shaming. This has got stuff to do with social media now, too. By not wearing the right running shoes, not drinking the right kind of beer, wearing the wrong kind of deodorant, and fear of imposed insecurity concerning their own identity. Tease. Okay, and so it get, keeps going. TV is omnipresent, shadowing us more than the obsolete God shadowed Joan of Arc. There are television sets in every home, every restaurant, every hotel room, every shopping mall. Now they're even small enough to carry in your pocket like electronic rosaries. Now he wrote this in like 91 or 92. Let's see if we can look this up. Uh, 92. All right. Um, it is unquestioned part of everyday life. And we could say that with social media today as well. Kneeling before the cathode ray God with our TV guide concordance in hand, we maintain the illusion of choice by flipping channels, chapters, and verses. It doesn't matter what's flashing on the screen. All that's important is the TV stays on. And many of you can attest to that. You just want the thing on. You know, you, you don't care what it's on. You just want it on. And I remember David Wilkerson years ago used to say the act of sitting down in front of the TV was an act of kneeling in worship. And I was like, whoa. Well, the, the founder of the Church of Satan says this as well. 
Um, so let's just keep going here. We can use TV as a potent propaganda machine. He's talking about Satanists. The stage is set for the infusion of true Satanic philosophy and potent, emotionally inspiring music to accompany the inverted crosses and pentagrams. Instead of holding our rituals in chambers designed for a few dozen people, we're moving into auditoriums crowded with ecstatic Satanists thrusting their fists toward, forward in the sign of the horns. As much bad press as the Church of Satan has received from the media over the past few years, uh, mention of the Satanic Bible only points people in our direction. Perhaps that's plan over after all. Now listen to this. This is amazing. The key is, is to use television and not be used by it. Munitions makers don't try the new stuff out on themselves. Now this is what Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, says. He says, if it takes turning your television to the wall or throwing it out the window, do it. We are adversaries to be reckoned with and must not be taken by our own infernal devices. So he's saying, you know, television is a uh, satanic device. And Satanists have a work to do, so they don't need to be ens ensnared by their own satanic device. Now, in the next chapter, some evidence of a new satanic age, part two. Remember, this is from 1992. This is uh, one of the phrases that really piqued my entrance. In the satanic Bible, I provided some example of how modern Christianity was modifying itself to keep step with diabolical advances. Okay, now it's time to recognize yet another manifestation. Many of you have already read my writings identifying TV as the new God. There's a little thing I neglected to mention up until now. Television is the major mainstream infiltration of the new satanic religion. So, you know, I feel comfortable in 1955, the United Pentecostal Church, was I'm a part of, put in their Articles of Faith, ministers and church folks in the UPC shouldn't have televisions in their home. Well, I, the, I'm in 2020, this is January 1st, we're doing these videos. Thank you for Brother Mallory for coming over on 2020 to do the videos, um, January 1st, that I'm more comfortable than ever saying, yes, apostolic people, Christian people should not have television sets in their home. Even in secular things, like I used to get this, what was it, the Weekly Standard magazine, and they had a whole magazine dedicated to all these, you know, University of Virginia professors, Ivy Leaguers, Harvard, all these people that don't have television and are the better for it. And also, like PBS, I mean, excuse me, NPR, not PBS, maybe PBS did do, but NPR used to have television turnoff week and go a week without television. People didn't think they could do it. And then when they get to the end, most everybody said, I'll never have a TV again. So I'm very comfortable. So because television is a major mainstream infiltration, new satanic religion, and people who study culture know that it is the biggest changer of culture ever. You had people with societies literally for thousands of years when television entered the society. It was like a combine. This is one of the things when I used to do missions trips. Wherever Hollywood culture was, it is a destructive force on culture. It, it just has its own thing. And obviously it's not Christian at this point. Even though Hollywood used to be very Christian, they used to donate uh, Los Angeles, the city of angels, not angels, angels used to, uh, if you would start a church there, they would give you the land free. That was just a little over a hundred years ago. Hard to believe, I know. Um, the birth of TV was a magical foreshadowing back to Anton. His daughter used to live in Henry County, Georgia, I was told, where we started a church many years ago, uh, foreshadowing its satanic significance. The first commercial broadcast was L aired on Walpert Schneid, April 30th, 1939, at the New York World's Fair. Since then, TV's infiltration has been so gradual, so complete, that no one even noticed. People don't need to go to church anymore. They get their morality plays on television. What began modestly as rabbit ears on top of family TV sets are now satellite dishes, and it says satellite sishes, so this is actually a grammatical error that I'm going to make note of. 
dishes and antennas pridefully dominating the skyline, replacing crosses on top of churches. The TV set, listen to this, or satanic family altar has grown more elaborate since the early 50s from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions, a major religion for uh, the masses. A consumer society in which we now live is an extension of the society once governed by religion for many centuries. Instead of obeying the Holy Bible, right or wrong, TV advertising now instructs what to buy and what not to buy. And people say, oh, it doesn't affect me. It's funny, they'll pay $5 million or whatever for a 30 second TV ad at the Super Bowl knowing that it's going to affect you. Don't be so prideful, it does affect you. Um, now, thanks to satanic infiltration, it's safe to say, I don't believe in God. Atheism was, wasn't tolerated when scriptural dictates were in, fact, in fashion and accepted as the word. But modern heresy, not conforming to a television lifestyle, now you can just say a pop culture uh, lifestyle, not accepting television truth, is liable to be punished with as much righteous enthusiasm as ever. The clergy of the TV religion are those entertainers, newscasters in particular, who rightly spread the word from their cathode ray pulpit. The network newscasters are the high priest and high priestesses of Satanism, bending the minds of viewers to the requirements of consumer marketing. And it's so much to talk about here. As I've said before, the TV guide is the new concordance tabloids and news magazines supply the instructions for pious living. TV devotion has become so pervasive that even motion pictures are today presented in the same fast cut limited information style. As the satanic stratification increases aided by the diabolical machine, it's what he calls television, one of our tasks is to develop a graduated system to type people according to their TV lifestyle. And so that's like basically the social credit system that's in Silicon Valley in so many ways uh, now. So it talks about media junkie. They're com comparable to the zealots who carry the good book around with him. And I find it fascinating, like good book, he capitalizes that. Preaching the word of the Lord, he capitalizes that to each and every person they encounter. It's like Satan has to acknowledge the Bible, and all this kind of stuff. Um, uh, next on the list is the casual Christian who watches on a fairly regular basis. Although Christian, he is nevertheless influenced by television and cannot or will not entertain anything outside the parameters of media input. The small time parishes inhabited by local newscasters are the true believers. Like highly placed Vatican leaders, they never really believe what they're saying. The lower clergy can deny the truth about the devilish plot behind television, and I find it fascinating he doesn't capitalize devilish, but in a, identification has been made. It will be impossible to dispel the equivalence that I pointed out. And basically, and I've, I've skipped around a lot, but he's, he's saying, Television, television watchers are equivalent to Bible readers and all of this. Once it's been resolved in a Satanist mind that TV is a very workable proponent of Satanism in its most practical form, then he may want to remove himself from the firing line, much like the Jesuit priest or rabbi or minister who doesn't, in his secret light, go along with every rule that he admonishes parishioners to hold on to. So a lot of other things I may, I, I did a video a few years ago. It's probably mistitled and, uh, and in a sense, maybe I apologize uh, for the mistitling there. That was in our embryonic stages. We're just trying to figure everything out. But uh, on certain things in here, because on clothing, man, just absolutely amazing. Clothes make the slave. That's another thing in here. Talk with you later. God bless in Jesus' name.